I'm Nell Sanders, and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. We just came back from Thanksgiving break, where we relax and enjoy time with family. However, for some ethnic groups, Thanksgiving and other holidays hold a different historical significance and meaning. I had the chance to sit down with Elizabeth Chilton in the anthropology department at UMass Amherst to hear more about the history of Native Americans in our area and the cycle of oppression that continues today. My name is Elizabeth Chilton. I'm a professor here at UMass Amherst and I specialize in archaeology and the anthropology of Native Americans. So I think it's more that the, um, the stereotype of what that initial encounter was about, I think that's what we need to change rather than saying, okay, we're not going to think about that. You know, I think um, Black Friday, by a number of my uh, Native American friends is, is celebrated as a national day of mourning for them. Rather than saying, instead of Thanksgiving, we're going to think about this, what they say is, okay, have your thanks, because that's in fact what in the end happened. But then let's also remember the legacy of what that colonial encounter led to. It's not in the U.S.'s best interest to acknowledge its role in um, you know, what some people have called genocide in some cases. Disregard for Native land is in something of the past. Some of you may know about the current issue striking the Native American community in our country, the Dakota Access Pipeline. Many tribes do not have federal recognition. They cannot make any claims for land. They cannot make any claims for sovereignty. Um, uh, and this is true across the whole United States, but I'm, I'm just using New England as an example. Protesters have been flocking to North Dakota since late last summer to support the Standing Rock Sioux tribe, who are fighting against a large and expensive pipeline that would go straight through their sacred Dakota territory. I believe, and many of my colleagues believe, that Native Americans in Manhattan were actually leasing it, allowing Europeans to come onto the land to grow some crops. They didn't have this concept of ownership because they understood that they were owned by the land more than the land was owned by them. Originally, the pipeline was supposed to go through Bismarck, North Dakota, but the town was worried of environmental effects on their water and the pipeline got pushed into native lands. The Standing Rock area currently holds 8,000 people in support. The area is also heavily militarized and there have been some severe clashes between the police and the protesters. I had the chance to interview Isabel Snodgrass, who spent her Thanksgiving at Standing Rock. She described the camp as a spiritual and peaceful place where no weapons, drugs, or alcohol were allowed. She said that the people there viewed themselves as protectors rather than protesters. Despite the intensity of her experience, Isabel left feeling hopeful and said, quote, what I saw at Standing Rock is the beginning of a movement that will end fracking in our country, unquote. Protesters are told to leave by December 5th, but the individual stations at Standing Rock have no intention to leave. We'll just have to wait and see how the story unfolds. Again, I'm Nell Sanders, and this was Tell It Like It Is.